What's up traders, Andrew O'Connell here with Pristine Capital. Welcome to your market recap video. It is August 25th of 2022. Today was such a wild day in the market. We do have the Jackson Hole press conference tomorrow with Jerome Powell. We do also have the PCE inflation data point coming out. So let's dive into today's action and we will talk about all the details of what occurred today. S&P 500 finished out the day plus 1.41%. Our NASDAQ QQQ finished up 1.77%. IWM small caps finished up 1.5%. We had the Dow Jones up 1.00%. And our ARK Innovation ETF finished up 2.88%. That was our big winner for today. You can see pretty much every index closed at the very top end of its range. You can even see you know, Dow Jones and ARK closed at literally the high of the day we had a volatility crush across the board once again and we did have very positive breath we had 80 percent advancers in the small caps finished out the day with 86.7 percent up volume and the trend model flipped from a negative one to a plus three now where did this rally start this was kind of out of nowhere right so at 2 a.m. this morning, we actually got some German GDP data that really catalyzed the first leg of this move. And to me, it's kind of like weird, a little bit wonky. So we had the GDP growth rate, you know, quarter over quarter, it came in at 0.1% growth. The consensus was 0% growth, and that catalyzed like a big overnight rally. The market S&P 500 was up like 0.9% off of that number which is very odd because remember that sell-off that we had a couple days ago, it was like a big two day whoosh down in the market. That was catalyzed by some German inflation data that came out way above the estimate. So it was really weird I think is the way that the market is interpreting inflation data and growth data. It's almost like when we get data that shows like, oh my gosh, the economy is doing pretty well. The market rallies on that, but in reality, the better the economy's doing, the less downward pressure there is on inflation. So like if you're you know Germany and you want to get inflation down, if you see the economy's growing faster than you expected, is that a good thing or is it a bad thing? Either way, it doesn't really matter. But the market rallied off of that data overnight. And then we also had some Chinese uh, data that came out as well. China adds 1 trillion yuan more of stimulus to rescue growth. And you can see they outline 19 policies, including policy bank funds, um, growth likely to be sluggish, barring major stimulus. So this is what I mean, like slow growth is what gets you more stimulus, which, you know, basically juices the markets. It's like this really weird perverse system that we have going on right now. But we basically had like these two like twin catalysts that really got the market going overnight and that strength continued throughout the day and we even got a really nice finish in the indices today finvis heat map we had semiconductors advancing to the upside nvidia had a big earnings whiff and it finished the day up 4.01 percent so it really just shows that investors are allocating capital to these markets and they're basically saying like, hey, the company might not be having great earnings right now, but we anticipate in the future, you know, either the economy is going to be so bad that we get stimulus or, you know, the, the stock's going to do better. So, yeah, very nice performance over there. Apple, which has been an incredibly strong stock, was up almost one and a half percent. Tesla, which we took a short on yesterday, was pretty weak today. And we actually closed out that short for a nice winner. And the energy stocks, which have been the big uh, gainer over the past maybe week or two, those actually took a bit of a break and they were a relative underperformer today. Our sector map, we can see XLE Energy. It's still in our top momentum slot. And funny enough, in our number two slot, we have the MSOS Cannabis ETF and it moved on 2.28 relative volume. And I did see there was a lot of options flow in this group as well. So we talked about this yesterday, definitely a group to keep watching. And are we going to get some sort of headline here? But it really just goes to show the MSOS cannabis stocks. These are highly illiquid. They're small caps. They're OTC stocks. So the fact that investors are buying these, that really just shows we do have a risk on 
uh, environment here. Solar stocks remain in our number three slot. And the China KWEB ETF was up 7.31%. That also moved on high relative volume. And I'm sure it had something to do with that stimulus announcement that came out. We also got some news. Europe basically said like, you know, the ECB, hey, you know, our asset purchases, we might not actually stop uh, reinvesting our, our uh, proceeds from our bonds that we own. And so that's basically them like hanging on to their QE program. So maybe that's just like another source of stimulus. Honestly, it seems like around the globe, it's like eh, inflation is a big problem, but we got to keep this stimulus going. So it's weird to me, like, you know, it just seems like some of these things are conflicting a little bit, but at the end of the day, you know, the price action is the price action. Let's take a look at our style factors. We had the high beta style factor up 2.54%. That was our big winner for today. We also had small cap value up 1.53%. And here's what is kind of interesting. So over the past couple of days, I've been more cautious on the market. The trend model was negative. Today's the first day that we flip positive. Here's our total put to call ratio. Investors ever since like that whoosh lower, it's not like, oh my gosh, like everyone's super cautious. We are seeing like a lot of call buying in relation to puts. And this hasn't even updated for today. I would imagine that this is going to come out, you know, even lower today, perhaps. And at that point, it's like the market just had in the grand scheme, like a bounce off the lows. And we're already starting to see some, you know, minor signs of complacency, you could say. And this is into a PCE data point and into Jerome Powell's, you know, presser tomorrow, his speech. So to me, it just seems like, you know, I rarely ever have this where the trend model flips and I still feel like kind of weirded out. But today is definitely one of those days where I'm like, this is just it seems kind of odd. But anyway, S&P 500, yeah, you can see here, we did close above the 20 day simple moving average. We also closed above that five day EMA and you see we're we're still a couple percentage points off the highs we were at the other day but who knows if the pce comes in lighter than expected and then suddenly jerome powell starts speaking a little bit more dovish could the market end up rallying back to these highs it's possible but on the other hand if the pce comes out light you know we're probably or it comes out hotter than expected it does seem like there's a high likelihood that we could just lose this 20-day simple moving average again and then we're sort of back to square one. So definitely have like a, you know, binary event tomorrow. And to me, it's kind of odd that we like ripped right into it. So yeah, it's almost as if like, who knows, maybe some players out there, they kind of know what the PCE data is going to look like, or they know what the presser is going to look like. I certainly don't know. On this hourly chart, you can see here that we are still pretty oversold actually. So look at this, like, Here's our weekly value area. We still you know, have not even tested the bottom even after today's nice rally. So very interesting stuff going on here. I mean, say if everything goes according to plan tomorrow, maybe that's a good level to target is 4260 spot five. I also wanna point out on the weekly chart, you can see we have our yearly point of control and we actually traded above that. We actually closed above it today. So that is a pretty significant level in the market. We've interacted with it about 12 times so far this year. And it just shows like there is some conviction today ahead of this binary event, which again, to me, it's kind of like a head scratcher, but you never know. Maybe this, if this data point comes out very light tomorrow, it'll be like, oh, okay, that all made sense. Take a look as well. We had the VIX that got you know, crush today. The VIX has, hasn't quite filled the gap from looks like the 22nd, but we are, we're definitely getting there. So you can see two days of pretty much a volatility crush. And then what else did we have? Our treasuries were bid today. And I noticed the treasuries are pretty much flat to slightly lower, but then we had a bunch of fed speakers. And as those fed speakers were doing their commentary, the bond market started to become bid. And I did notice that some of them had, I guess you could call them like dovish commentary where they were saying like, hey, you know, maybe we raise rates a couple more times and then we see how everything manifests, see how it all plays out. So I think that was enough to get this oversold bounce in bonds. 
and you can see we've had pretty much like two or three weeks of just like downside and these 10 year treasury futures and we got the nice balance today and it did come on high relative volume as well now let's take a look our dollar index dollar index so this is another point of ambiguity the dollar index was down 0.24 percent so on the one hand like that's good you know dollar relief that's easing of financial conditions like this all makes perfect sense but the dollar index again like it's not really like oh yeah we're getting this good sell-off in the dollar it's really just like we got to an overbought condition in the dollar and now we're moving sideways we're still above that five-day ema so i think like with investors just getting like super confident on one side and we have you know some of these variables that are still kind of up in the air i feel a little bit less less comfortable but we'll have to see what happens we do have the qt program which is going to double in pace in september as well so it's a lot of cross currents at play here crude oil this is one for the bulls here crude oil was down 1.97 percent today and it is good that we failed at this monthly value area so the higher that crude goes the more likely it is that the inflation peaking narrative just kind of comes undone. And then again, we're back at square one. So it is good to see that failure in these energy prices. And that certainly helps the market overall. Now let's take a look here. Let's check out some of our other indices. We have the NASDAQ. This one actually did not get up to the 20 day simple moving average, but closed above the five day EMA. This one's kind of in no man's land. We had the Russell 2000 that did finish above that 20 day simple moving average. Looks like it's retraced almost half of the losses over the past week. And then what else do we have? Our dogs of the Dow, of course. Dogs of the Dow finished up 0.8%. And these did finish out above the 20 day simple moving average. We are seeing some nice action in leading stocks as well, like GFS. This went up 6.79%. And this is also what's interesting like i'm noticing that investors they're just continuing to accumulate equities like gfs like it had a like mini pullback but it's just the buyers you know they stepped right back in so honestly like it might end up being like hey everyone does know that inflation peaked and everyone does know that the fed's going to become more accommodative and whatever but it just seems odd that like the bull market would start before the QT program even really like begins. So I don't know, you never know. I've, I've never seen it occur like that where like, as we're going into the tightening, the bear market ends because, you know, we're anticipating that the tightening that hasn't even started is gonna end and turn into easing. So I don't know, it's a bit of a difficult picture here for me. So let's check this out as well. I already talked about the bonds. We talked about the volatility. Chinese names. Let's take a look at where these are. So again, this is potentially like a new leadership group. And I did add some more exposure in this group. You can see KWeb is out above that 50 day simple moving average. We crossed above that 20 day simple moving average yesterday. And this did occur on high relative volume. So pretty much like investors, this group has just been like shot for dead. And we do have those tensions with China, the whole Taiwan situation. But I mean, one trillion yuan in stimulus, that's pretty good. And perhaps that economy could be bottoming out. So this one, very strong group. I actually added a position today in C-Web, common shares. And this is the double leverage China ETF. And the other name that I already had on the books heading into today's session via some call options was DQ. And this one had a pretty epic shakeout below this monthly value area. And today ended up finishing out above the 20 day simple moving average. We did find some resistance at that point of control, but I think this is still a win considering, you know, that a lot of players likely got shaken out over the last couple days. Now let's also check out this MSOS. I just think this is important. And look at this, we're out above value and we actually got some more extension beyond that. So investors, if they're willing to allocate to the cannabis group, barring some big catalyst, you know, this really just shows like we're in a risk on mode within the market. Now let's take a look at some of my trades for today. We'll go over to the common stock. 
I actually closed out my ENVX, the, the runner position that I had on. I closed this out in the pre-market at 8.40 a.m. for 25.76. We had paid 21.39 for that position. And again, one of our members put this one on the radar for us and I, I took the trade based off of him calling it out. So pretty cool stuff. And I just put here, taking off the table in case there's some selling of the pre-market strength. And I do believe we did get some selling of that name. Let me see what ENVX did. Let's see, ENVX. Yeah, and ENVX, wow, this one ends up closing down on the session. So yeah, this one closed out in the pre-market pretty close to the highs here, which is good. I also traded Plug Power. And this one, there was a headline in the morning that they were actually gonna be doing a partnership with Amazon. So I bought the shares for $30.59 at 9.03. And I ended up closing out 30% of it for 31.90, so a nice little winner. And then I ended up closing out the remainder of it for 30.89, so only like a 30 cent winner, nothing big at all. And I put, I have no real conviction in this, so going to paper hand it for a small base hit and plug. I don't know what that one ended up doing. Let me see. Plug. Wow, oh, yeah. So it ended up putting in a red candle ended up closing out below my entry. So that was pretty good. Got a base hit before the market even opened, which is always a good thing. It happens very rarely, but sometimes you just get a breaking news headline and you get a nice opportunity from it. Now, what else did we do? I got along those C-Web shares as we discussed earlier, the double leverage China ETF. On the option side, I did kind of get caught wrong footed on these uh, spy puts. This was a trade that I wanted to throw on as a hedge this is one I was thinking about it last night, thinking about it in the shower this morning. And I found that the September 6th, uh, 4.15, or the September 6th at the money implied vol was trading pretty cheap. So I bought those September 6th, 4.15 puts. I added to those in a couple of increments throughout the day. And I got to an average cost of $4.69 on those put options. I gotta say though, I've had some really good sequences over the past two months or so. Today was the first day where I did face some adversity because at one point, you know, I'd added to those puts, we got a break lower intraday and I could have sold them for like a decent winner. And it was literally like, you know, within an hour, I ended up putting out a limit order. You can see it over here. I put a limit order to close out half of those for six bucks and it just never hit the limit. Uh, these put options as of right now, I believe I'm at like a 13% loss on these or something, something close to that. And I notice sometimes I do this, like it gets to a really nice level where I'd want to take a target, but then I put a limit order out and I put the limit order out like at an aggressive, you know, further away point. I think sometimes when I see it's at a nice level, I need to just at least take a piece off because I, that really would have helped today. So yeah, that one got caught a little wrong footed, um, but that's okay. You know, trading, it's kind of crazy. I've had a sequence over the past like two or three months where like almost every single trade I've put on has like worked to perfection, which is odd. That rarely ever happens to me. I, my win rate is somewhere usually between 40% when I'm trading poorly, you know, 50 or 55% when I'm trading really well. So it is weird where I had a streak where it was like literally like 100%, just like dead eye hit rate for a little bit. So today was kind of like, all right, trading is hard. And uh, you know, it's just all about how you really respond to the adversity, honestly. So yeah, what else do we do? The Tesla puts. These, uh, we closed two thirds of those out for $7.10. We had paid $4.33 for those. And so far, as history showed, Tesla's kind of weak after the stock split. So we closed part of it out for 710. And then as the trend model flipped into the bell, I closed out the final third for 440. So that was basically like a scratch, very small winner. But we got two thirds of it off for a you know, really nice winner, almost a double. So that was you know very fruitful. And then what else did I do? I sold some Twitter September 9th, 39 and a half strike puts for $1.19. And you know they, they had announced today they're gonna be doing podcasts on the platform, which is really cool. And I may end up being on some of those podcasts, which is awesome. Uh, 
And yeah, I just did the math on this merger arbitrage setup. And if I, I place the, I, I assume that the odds of the takeover happening are 30%. I tried to be, you know, relatively conservative and given where my stop is in the $54.20 deal price, it's a positive expected value. So I went ahead and I sold those put options. We'll see what happens. Let's see what Twitter actually did today. And we'll look at, we'll look at Tesla as well. So yesterday I was like uh, short Tesla, long Twitter. And yeah, Twitter, not a bad finish up 0.64%. So there is some interest here. You know, towards the end of the day, it was, it was red. It was like negative 0.6%. So that's good to see. And then Tesla, it was just one of those where it just looked like it didn't want to die team. It may end up just completely dying tomorrow if the PCE comes out hotter than expected. But if it doesn't, this thing could just, you know, completely rip. So I was like, you know what? Let's finish this out as a good trade. Not going to go for the home run here. And, you know, we'll see what happens. But yeah, Tesla definitely looks like it's certainly not showing relative strength on the first day after that stock split. So overall, heading into tomorrow, team, it's going to come down to this binary event. The market's pretty much saying that they know how this is going to go. Remember, the expectation for tomorrow for PCE is we're going to get a negative 0.1% month over month um, you know, decline in inflation. And that's actually very similar to what we got for CPI. We already got the July CPI number, and it was basically flat month over month. So it's not a stretch to believe like the PCE is probably going to be right around there. So it's really just what the reaction looks like. I mean, even if it comes out at negative 0.1 now, you know, maybe Jerome Powell will just be like, all right, guys, mission accomplished. We had one month of, of you know, negative inflation. Who really knows? But, well, as always, we're going to have to see what the river brings, team. Tomorrow is going to be a wild day. I'm really pumped to trade it and looking forward to speaking with you all tomorrow after the bell.